Okay, welcome to another video. So the popular Debian-based distribution, MX Linux, have just released the first beta to the newest version of 21, which is what we're going to be checking out today. So before we jump into the live environment and get this installed, read a little bit from the release announcement, and then we'll get straight into it. So they currently have 32-bit and 64-bit versions for their flagship desktop environment of XFCE with the 5.10 kernel. So MX21 is built from Debian Bullseye and the MX repositories. So what's new in the first beta? New and updated applications, a new installer partition selection area, including some LVM support if LVM volume exists already. Okay. New UEFI live system boot menus. Now you can select your live boot options, for example, persistence, from the boot menu and sub menus or rather than using the previous console menus. The version of XFCE that's going to be shipped is version 4.16. User password, sudo for admin tasks by default. You can switch this in MX Tweak other tab. Many small configuration changes, particularly on the panel with new default panel plugins. And that's something I'm definitely interested in checking out. I've always quite liked the way they've set up their panels on MX Linux. With this beta release, we are particularly interested in testing the new UEFI live system boot menus as well as testing the installer. VirtualBox testing is welcome, but we are looking for edge cases on real hardware for the most part. And like we always do on our videos, we are going to be installing natively on real hardware. So like with all betas, there are some known issues. So the wallpaper is a little busy and the current conky gets washed out a little. It looks better on some screens than on others. That will all be worked out after they've chosen their new default wallpaper. Now the next applies to the 32-bit ISO only. There is an error message when you boot the ISO in VirtualBox. Also the VirtualBox guest editions are not pre-installed and again that's on the 32-bit ISO only. MX package installer. So the test repo and backport tabs will not display anything for obvious reasons as the repos don't exist or are empty at this time. Now they've only got the XFT version ready at the moment but also planned are the KDE Plasma, AHS, XFC and Fluxbox based releases. Now the ISO for this is about 1.8 GB in size. And with that being said, let's jump into the live environment and get this installed. So here we are in the boot menu for the MX Linux 21 ISO. And as you can see under advanced options, we can now do the persistence options as well as the boot options, a fail safe options, and then get back into the console options or disable the grub theme. So we're going to go back to the main menu and boot straight into the live environment. Right, so here we are in the live environment for MX Linux 21 Wildflower. And like they mentioned in the release announcement, the wallpaper really does clash quite severely with the conky widget there, making it very hard to read the information that's displayed. But once they've chosen a new default wallpaper, that will all be fixed in the final release. So what we're gonna do is go straight into install MX Linux from the welcome screen and get this set up. Okay, so first things first, I am just going to change my keyboard settings. It's currently on US, so I'm going to go to change keyboard settings. I'm going to go to plus, layout, English UK, no variant, we'll leave it like so. And I'm just going to remove the US keyboard entirely, apply. Okay, and now as you can see, the layout has changed to GB, so we can go to the next step. Right, so we've got a couple of options here. We can do a regular install using the entire disk, or we can customize the disk layout and create the partitions ourselves. We're going to go for the regular install using the entire disk and see how it sets it all up for us and what partition sort of layout it's going to be using. And we're going to be doing it on device SDB, which is the Samsung SSD 860 Evo M.2. Next. So is it okay to format and use the entire disk? It is indeed. So here we can see we can install Grub for Linux and Windows. We only have Linux on this machine, so we're not too worried about that. And then the location to install on, we can do MBR, PBR, or of course ESP. And then the partition it's gonna use is from SDB1, so the same drive that we're installing on, of a little sort of 256 MB FAT32 partition. Next. So I'm not too worried about that for now, so we'll leave that like so and go to the next step. And as you can see as well, it's already started actually doing the installation, so it's a very quick installation process with MX Linux. Now for locale, we are going to want to change that to United Kingdom, and we're also going to want to change my time zone to Europe London. All looks good, and now we can go to the next step. 
which is going to be your user account and root password. So let's just go and call this one Tyler, type in our default password, and we'll do the same for the root password. And then as you can see, just beneath that, we've got a few different options. And one really cool option is actually the option to save live desktop changes. So any changes we make to our desktop in the installation process in a live environment will then be saved and applied to our sort of fresh setup when we are fully installed, which is very cool. But the only one that I'm going to select for now is the auto login. So we don't have to go to the login screen every time we start up and next. OK, that's everything. I'm going to pause the video here and then we'll come back once it's finished. And there we go. And that really did take no time whatsoever on my machine finishing in just a few minutes. So let's reboot and check out our freshly installed MX Linux 20 RAM. Right, so here we are and we are greeted with the MX21 Wildflower welcome screen. Now before we go through any of that, there are some updates that we need to grab here so we can see it in the little indicator. So let's right click and go to view and upgrade and see how much we're going to be updating. So 55 upgraded and we need to get 101 MB of archive. So let's go ahead and press upgrade and it will ask you for your pseudo password. And then what I'll do here is pause the video and come back once it's finished. Okay, so we're all up to date and should be good to go. So we'll start with the welcome screen, but we won't spend too much time here. But in the welcome screen, we do have quick links to the FAQ, users manual, the wiki tools, and then we also have the tweak panel, which is where you can change the default layout of the panel. And something quite cool that MX do is if you was to decide to do that, it will make a backup of your sort of current or default layout so you can quickly and easily restore it to the one you had set previously but we'll go through mx tweak in just a moment we didn't have links to forums videos contribute codex and popular apps now in the other tab of about here you can get a bit of system information so the desktop you're currently using as well as the distribution and then you get some sort of system information like your cpu etc so we can see that we are using MX21. The Debian version underpinning everything is version 11.0. The desktop is, of course, XSE version 4.16.0. And this is all supported until June 2024. So the default shell is, of course, Bash. And MX Linux uses X11 as its default session type. Now what we're going to do is spend a little bit of time on the default layout of the desktop and how it's all set up. But for those of you who do want to see what this actual Conky widget looks like, I've grabbed a couple of different wallpapers just to quickly change to so we can see what's going on until they've chosen a new default wallpaper. Because as you can see in the default backgrounds folder, that is the only one that we currently have. So if we go to our pictures folder, we do have one here and that should make things a little bit easier to see. So it's quite a nice, simple looking widget with just the current date and time as well as some system information for your HDD, memory and CPU. Let's go back to the default wallpaper and keep it moving. Now, if we right click on our desktop, we get quite a few nice options in our right click menu here. So we can create a launcher, create a folder, document and all of that good stuff. We can open a terminal here and we can also create a sim link here. But we also have the option to go through all of our desktop applications from here as well, as opposed to always going to our whisker menu which is bound to your left super key. Now, MX Linux is one of the distributions that really did help quite popularize the everything happens on the left-hand side of your screen with just a single left side panel. Now, the application launcher is at the very bottom, which is, of course, Whisker, with your categories to the right, and we'll go through the applications and the versions they're using in just a moment. And then we have the power buttons up to the very top where we can log out, restart, shut down, switch user, and suspend. And we can also save sessions for future logins, which I'm not a huge fan of, so I'll always leave that disabled. Now, something cool about the way their sort of panel has been set up. So if we used to open up an application, let's say our default file manager, which is, of course, Funa, you can see that it's going to minimize into its own actual application icon. And if we were to right click over that, we can see that we've got a few different options here. So it's currently pinned to a dock. So MX Linux uses a dock kind of plugin in your panel to give you that functionality as opposed to just pinning sort of launchers and then launching applications like so with their own separate sort of taskbar entry. So if we close this off for now, and in fact, we also have the left super and right super automatically assigned to split applications to either side of the screen. Now, one thing I don't quite like about the way they've set up Funa is that it's a single click to activate items. So I'm just going to go straight into the preferences very quickly. It's very easy to change. Go into behavior and I'm just going to change it to double click to activate items. 
which is more what I'm used to, so it feels a bit more natural. Now let's right click on the panel and go straight into the panel preferences. So of course we have the usual sort of stuff here, the different layouts of modes of so desk bar, vertical, horizontal. Now I wouldn't really worry about changing your layout too much in the panel preferences because we of course have MX's own tools and tweak tools to do that for you. But what we are going to do is go straight into the items so we can see that what we are now using as our desktop panel plugins. So like we said, we've got the action buttons at the very top, the date and time to follow it. And then we have the dock like taskbar, which is allowing us to actually pin applications to our taskbar and then launch them from their own application icon. So for example, if we open up a terminal and then we go ahead and right click over that, we can also just hover and then close it like so, but with a right click, we can now pin that to our taskbar. And now if we just to close that, and we can just always just very nice and easily open it up once again without sort of expanding the amount of space that we are using on the panel so it just tidies things up a whole lot and i'm a massive fan of that implementation there are other ways of doing it of course there's things like dock bar x etc but i quite like the way mx have gone with that we then have our pulse audio plugin status tray plugin power menu plugin the workspace switcher now it's set up sort of vertical not quite sort of horizontal which you should be quite used to on xfce so instead of using control alt left and right to change workspaces it's going to be control alt up and down so as you can see it's going up and down and that is your very small little workspace switcher right there and out of the box it's going to give you two but of course we can go straight into the workspaces oh wrong one we can go straight into the workspaces and then actually add a few more as well i'm someone who likes to have quite a static four so let's go ahead and make that four and then as you can see, we've now got a grid, but it's still quite hard to see on here. But it should now let us go left, right, and up and down. So as you can see, we're going left, right, and up and down. So it's a whole sort of four-way grid there. Let's close that off. Brilliant. So also on the desktop, we have a couple of links here to the MX user manual and, of course, the FAQ. So what I want to do now is spend a little bit of time going through the, through the default applications and seeing what versions of things we are going to be using as it currently stands. Starting in accessories, we of course have the application finder, the archive manager, catfish file search, we have the conky manager and the conky toggle. Featherpad is our lightweight QT text editor. We have calculator, GTK hash, iDevice mounter, and then we have the LightDM GTK plus greeter settings so we can change the way our sort of login screen looks and we'll check out the default look in just a moment. We then have Lucky Backup, the Midnight Commander, which is a terminal-based file manager that you can split into sort of two panes and then sort of use it like so, very handy. We have the MX Updater, which is what we're going to be using to update our applications, etc. And as you can see, we get a nice little icon when updates are ready, which is this bad boy right here, and that will turn green where there are updates available to apply. We then have Onboard and Onboard Settings, which is for your onboard screen, uh, your on-screen keyboard. Task Manager, Text Info, Funar, and then XF Burn. Now in development, we have a Genie and Icon Browser. And in games, we've got a couple of little simple games here. So we have L Breakout 2, Mahjong, Peg E, I've not played that one before, and Swell Foop. And in graphics, we have the Document Scanner, we have GFUM to view our images, and then we have a Laze Paint, which I've never used before. LibreOffice Draw, so we should have the full LibreOffice suite. We'll go through that in just a moment and see what version we have. So we've got no GIMP here, so I'll probably go ahead and install GIMP just so I can use that to do simple image editing. Now in internet, we have Firefox and known PPP, and your default desktop email client is gonna be Thunderbird, which is a very capable email client. And in for Torrents, we're going to be using the good old transmission. Now, if we quickly open up Firefox, we can see what version we are using. So let's go into Help Annabelle, and it should be a nice new version of version 90.0.2. Then in multimedia, we have the Asla Mixer, the Asunder CD Ripper, Clementine, which is a pretty decent application to manage and play your music library, GMPT, we have Pulse Audio Volume Control, and then we have pretty much the best media player you could ask for in VLC, XF Burn once more, and then we have a Webcamoid, which is quite a cool little application for your webcam, and is a bit more in depth than an application like Cheese. If we open this up, there's a whole lot more that you can do here. So you have your screen there, and then we have different effects, sources, and all of that good stuff. So it's kind of like a shrunken down, less sort of fully featured version of something like OBS. So something much better to use than just sort of your basic Cheese or webcam viewer. 
And I think Ubuntu Mate also now uses this as a default sort of webcam application. So it's a very well known, quite good application for your webcam. So I think that's everything in multimedia. Now, MX Tools is something that we are going to go through because we're going to be checking out the MX Tweak stuff and all of that good stuff in just a moment. So we have the Brighton Assist Tray, we have the Shroot Rescue System, the CLI, App Based Package Manager, a USB formatter, again the iDevice Mounter, Job Scheduler, Kernel Updater for Live USB, MX Boot Options, MX Boot Repair, MX Cleanup, MX Codex Installer, MX Conkey, MX Date and Time, MX Fix GPG Keys, then we have a Live USB Maker, so there's a whole lot of just MX applications. We then have the MX Remaster CC, MX Repo Manager, MX Select Sound, MX Snapshot. So again, we can create a live ISO snapshot of your running system, which is very cool. MX System Events, and then we have MX Tools. If we open up MX Tools, that's going to have pretty much that whole kind of list of applications that we've just run through in one nice, easy to use window here. And speaking with someone a little while ago, they said this was kind of like the Debian alternative to Yast, uh, Yast from OpenSUSE. And I can kind of see where they're coming from. And here we can also do the NVIDIA driver installer for those of you that use NVIDIA. Now, if we go straight into Tweak, let's go ahead and show you how easy it is to change a sort of panel layout. So effects first panel. So currently we're displaying the panel on left, but we can go ahead and click apply. And it's super simple, it's now going to move that to the bottom using the same kind of setup. And now our workspaces are in a more kind of horizontal view. And then as you can see, we're no longer in a grid or using any vertical workspaces. It's all going from left to right, which I kind of prefer. But we're going to leave it on the default layout at just the sort of left hand side for now. Cool. Now for theming, we have quite a lot of different themes here that we can choose from, which is very cool. And they do include some of my favorite theming of all, which of course are the whole arc dark variations. We have arc, arc darker, arc dark, arc lighter, and then we have the blackbird and all of the matcha sort of theming there as well. And then we also have a new mix. And then for the window managers, we also have again, a nice selection of themes there. So we have all of the arc stuff. And then for icons, not a bad selection. We have the new mix and we have papyrus MX blue as the default which I think is quite nice, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it on there. Now for the compositor, we can see that it's got the V-Blank set to auto and transparency and shadow options. The compositor it's using is XFWM, so the default XFCE compositor. Then we can go into the display, so we have GTK scaling here, and we can also change the resolution of our screens and all of that good stuff. We can have config options, so you know when you saw me do the sort of changing the behavior in the actual Funar itself, we can do it here as well. So as you can see here, we have enable single click in Funar file manager, which we have already disabled in the behavior, but as a nice easy way to do it, we can also do it all through the MX tweak tool, which is very cool. We can then do things like resetting our light DM to the system default, enable mounting of internal drives by non root users, enable kernel sandbox, Use client side decorations on GTK3 applications that support them. So that's CSD, and that was something that was brought in in XFCE 4.16. And then we also have the option to use the tear free option for AMD. So this is something that I actually think is very cool, and it's something I often always have to do myself. But they will go ahead and do that for you and just create the exorg.com with a tear free option. So if you are experiencing any sort of screen tear, that should go ahead and fix it for you, which is very cool as well. So let's close that off and then keep it moving. What else have we got here? So like I say, a whole lot that you can really do here. So a very cool little application with some in-house applications that makes using your system a lot easier, especially when it comes to configuring it to your liking. Oh, and then one more thing I forgot to mention is of course the password for the administrative tasks set to user by default, but we can easily switch it over to root, click apply, and then it will ask you for your password but I'm going to leave it on user. Now, office wise, we have a Foliate, which is an ebook viewer. We then have the full liberal office suite, PDF arranger and QPDF view. So let's go ahead and open up writer and see the version of writer we are currently using. And if it's working with automatic spell checking out of the box, it is indeed. Now, if we go straight into help and about, we can see that we are using liberal office version 7.0.4.2. And then we have the locale set to ENGB which is all good. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything that we need to check out in Office. 
we then have some settings here so a lot of this is going to be sort of your xfce settings and a few other additional things so of course we have the appearance packages so if you didn't want to use the mx tweak tool you could use the more sort of standard xfce packages that then go ahead and change your appearance and all of that good stuff anything else in here i might want to check out we have our bluetooth settings color profiles we have the very simple to use a firewall configuration which i'm sure we're all used to by now very simple little window there to let you sort of set the status to active change the profile and all of that good stuff is there anything else in settings worth us having a quick look at um no i don't think so and of course the default package manager we are going to be using to install new applications and just do a bit of more in-depth package management is synaptics package manager now as far as other packaging formats i'm pretty sure there is no out of the box snap support on mx linux but I think there is Flatpak support. So if we type in Flatpak, we can see that we do have the Flatpak package installed. So along with the FlatHub repository, we could also go ahead and install our Flatpak applications from FlatHub, which is very cool. And I also think we have NeoFetch installed out of the box, which is a simple and handy way for us to see how much applications are installed by default. However, it doesn't appear to have the listed packages. So I think what we'll do is we're going to go straight back into Synaptic and see if we can get a list of what we, how much packages we have installed out of the box before we make any changes to our system. So we can see here, under installed, we have 1,969, so just short of 2,000. So I think what we'll do now is we'll do a quick reboot and see how much RAM we're using, and then we'll start sort of setting up a few things and see how we go. So we've just done a fresh reboot and run HTOP in the terminal, which is installed out of the box, and we can see there... Not too bad, especially for a beta, we're using under 700 MB at 613. And when you consider how much is set up for you out of the box and how many additional applications and tools you do have at your disposal, that's not really too bad whatsoever. Now we can see just beneath that, we have a swap partition of HEB. So using the sort of default erase disk and install, it's gone ahead and created us a partition for our swap of eight. And if we open up Gparted, which again is installed out of the box, we can then also just see what other partitions it might have created for us. So let that load in the volumes and then we're gonna go straight down to SDB. And then we can see here we have a quite a simple partition layout. So we have our swap, we have our root partition of ext4 and then we have our boot efi now there's a few other additional applications that i haven't shown that we don't really need to spend too much time going into but one that you might have saw come up when we just searched for gparted was the application called gdebi so whenever you download a .deb application from the internet instead of sort of going into a terminal doing sudo apt install dot slash and then followed by the package you can then just go ahead and use gdb as a nice simple gui to install it for you now as well as the synaptic package manager they also have their own mx package installer and it has quite a few little lists here so we have popular applications sorted by category we then have the stable repo the test repo debian backports and then what's really cool is we also have the flat pack here as well so MX Linux includes this repository of flat packs for the user's convenience only, and it is not responsible for the functionality of the individual flat packs themselves. For more, consult flat packs in the wiki. So we can close that. Let's type in our password. Now it's going to download the package info. And then as you can see, it's already got the repo there for us, which is of course FlatHub. And that's where we're going to go ahead and install a few applications needed to edit today's video. And of course, the main one being Caden Live. So we can just select that and we can do like batch installs, which is very cool. So let's also go ahead and grab GIMP. We'll get that as a flat pack. Why not? And let's see if there is anything else that I might need. No, I think that'll be just enough for now. So now what all we need to do is just go ahead and press install. And it's going to go ahead and install all of those applications that we sort of selected. And we're good to go. So I'll pause video here and come back once they're finished. Okay, so our Flatpak applications of GIMP and Caden Life have now been installed from the FlatHub repository using MX's a very simple package installer. Now I tested out very quickly launching them and finding them in our Whisker menu, which it did without any issues at all. And then I got a bit scared or worried that it wasn't going to work with the dock plugin that we we're using on our panel because it didn't originally find the icon for it or actually let us pin it. Fortunately, I decided probably need to do a reboot and then it should work. And I can confirm that if we now open up a Flatpak application, it does indeed find the correct icon and we can also right click and pin it to our dock. 
and then we can launch our Flatpak applications like we would any other native application straight from our taskbar without any issues. Now I think that's where I'm going to wrap it up with my first look of MX Linux 21. So it's currently in its first beta phase. Once the final release is out, we'll do a follow up where we'll go into a bit more depth and we'll include the other desktop versions. So things like KDE. But I think it's quite safe to say that MX Linux probably ships one of the nicest most user-friendly xfc desktop environments around and they do really put the user first to make it a whole lot easier especially for a new user coming over to set things up in a way that feels quite home and familiar to them thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe and if you've really enjoyed it you can consider supporting me on patreon join the discord there's a link in the description and i'll see you on the next one Bye bye